my yarny friends, I'm Sarah Satch, and welcome or welcome back to my crochet channel. Now today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a creepy eyeball pillow. Now these are best made in sets of two, as you saw from those pictures at the beginning of the video. Now I got this idea from a neighbor that I had when we lived in Colorado. They had huge blue spruce trees around their property and they would take frisbees and they would paint them to look like eyeballs and then they would hang them in their tree so it looked like they were watching the neighbors. <laughs> it was the best idea and I thought I could do that with making some creepy eyeball pillows and the nice thing about that is is you don't have to throw them away at the end of the season. There's the paint would peel off after a while. And so if you make a pillow or two, you can put them out in your yard and hang them up in your trees or put them in your window or something like that. But you can also decorate with them inside your house. And I think they're super fun. This pattern works up super fast. And of course you just make two of the same eyeball and we put them together and it's really easy and super cute. Everybody will love them. Now the pillow, once you get the red trim on, measures about 12 inches across. So it's a nice size pillow, but not a huge pillow. Just perfect for decorating. Now you can find this free crochet pattern on my blog with pictures. And as always, I'll put that blog link down in the notes underneath this video. Just remember, I am watching you. <laughs> to make a creepy eyeball pillow, I am using medium weight number four acrylic yarn that I have in my yarn stash. And so what I did is I rolled up some balls of yarn that have two strands rolled together. All of it is stitched with two strands, the pupil, the iris, the white portion, and the edge is all stitched holding two strands of yarn together. Now I made this one in this beautiful blue, but the next one I'm going to make, I'm going to use this green, and this is like a spruce green. It's kind of a, not teal, but it is green. And you can use any color for your eyeball. I was going to use yellow because I thought that would look a little bit creepy also, but I didn't have any yellow in my yarn scraps. And so I just rolled up green, white, black, and red for my creepy eyeball. Now, to make one pillow that's two sides, you're going to need about an ounce and a half of the black, because remember, we're holding two strands together, an ounce and a half for your iris color, and about two ounces for your white color, and then about an ounce of the red, because we're just going to do the trim and the blotchy red spots. <laughs> All right. Now you may be wondering why I have these clips here. And so what I do is I take the clip and I got red ones. These I got at the Dollar Tree and it had two red, two green, two blue, and two yellow, I think. Um, there were eight of them. And you can use these to hang this up on the branches of the tree or <clears throat> however you want to hang it up. That way you don't have to put a string in it if you don't want to. That's just what I decided to use. Now for the stitching up of the pillow, because I wanted my stitches to be just a little bit tighter, I decided to use an L hook. And the L hook is an eight millimeter crochet hook. It's a little bit smaller than the nine or 10 millimeter. So you get a little bit tighter of a stitch. All right, so that's our eight millimeter crochet hook. You need a needle for weaving in ends and for sewing on the blotchy red portions and you need a pair of scissors. Then you're going to need some stuffing and I've got some polyester fiber fill here, not very much. You don't want to overstuff this because you don't want it to be bulging unless that's what you're looking for. <laughs> you just want enough for it to hold its shape and so you can hang it up. So as you can see, the black yarn is very difficult to film. So I've gone ahead and stitched up the first two rows in black, but I'm going to show you how to do that with this gray yarn, make it easier for you to see what to do. But do the first two rows in black so that you have a black pupil in the center of your eye. 
all right but again I'm demonstrating in this gray so you can see better all right so we'll start with our slip knot and we're going to chain five we'll join this chain five into a circle and we'll make that stay knot now if you prefer to do a magic circle or another method in making your circle you certainly can alrighty so now I have my circle put our hook in pull up a loop yarn over and we're going to chain three the chain three counts as our first double crochet we're going to stitch nine more double crochets so we have a total of ten And again, we're using two strands for the entire project. All right, I think that's 10, but let me count just to make sure. Here's our chain three that string out of the way there so that's one two three four five six seven eight nine I need one more there we go now I have ten double crochets I should have rolled this gray up like I did that black so I wouldn't have any tangles I'm going to join to the chain three whoops got to make sure we get both those strands there we go and chain three so for row one or round one we have ten double crochets we join to our chain three and chain three so now we're going to turn this over and we're going to gently pull on that yarn and we're going to go ahead and weave this in and on this particular project I like to weave as I go because it is a pillow we want all those ends to be weaved in before we close it up but of course you can wait till you finish the side the front and then the back and then weave it in before you put it together it's kind of up to you when you want to do that I depends on the project sometimes I like to weave as I go and sometimes I like to wait till the end also sometimes depends on my mood <laughs> all righty we'll clip that all right so we have those 10 double crochets for round one and now we're going to do round or row two our chain three counts as our first double crochet we're going to double crochet in this same stitch as our chain three and then we're going to stitch two double crochets in each of those double crochets around So row one had 10 double crochets and row two will have 20 double crochets because we're stitching two double crochets in each. And you're going to see this project works up super quick. So I'll continue around stitching two double crochets in each of my double crochets and then join back to my chain three so I've stitched two double crochets in each of my ten so row two has 20 double crochets we'll join to the chain three and so we'll cut our yarn but this is my demo so I'm going to move that out of the way and grab my black one I've joined to my chain three and I've cut my yarn so we're going to join in our color two which is the color we're using for our iris and of course you can choose any color that you want for your iris all right get those strings out of the way we're going to chain three now we'll double crochet in the same stitch as our chain three 
And now we'll stitch one double crochet in the next stitch. And so the repeat for row three is two double crochets in the next stitch, one and two, and one double crochet in the next. Make sure that's nice and smooth. When you're dealing with two strands, you have to constantly pull it out or else you'll end up with little loops and bumps and things, and we don't want that. All right, so two double crochets in the next stitch, and one double crochet in the next. I call this doing two in one. Again, I use that term all the time. It's not a technical crochet term. It just helps me remember what I'm supposed to be doing on any particular row. All right, so two double crochets in the next double crochet, and one double crochet in the next. And we'll repeat this working all the way around and join back to our chain three. So I stitch two and one all the way around. For row three, you're going to have 30 double crochets. We're going to join to that chain three, and we're gonna go ahead and chain three because we're not changing colors. All right, so let's do row four. Row four, we're gonna stitch a double crochet in that same stitch as our chain three, and then we'll stitch one double crochet in the next two. One and two. Then we'll stitch two double crochets in the next stitch. One and two. And then one double crochet in the next two. And so for row four, our repeat is two double crochets in the next, one double crochet in the next two. And we'll repeat this working all the way around. And then again, join back to our chain three. I have completed row four. Row four, you're going to have 40 double crochets. We joined to our chain three, but we didn't chain three because we're going to cut our yarn and bring in our white. Myself just a little bit more of a tail there so I can weave that in later. All right, now we're going to chain three. Snug it all down. We're going to stitch a double crochet in the same stitch as our chain three. There we go, whoops. All right, now we're going to stitch one double crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, and three. And so our repeat for row five is two double crochets in the next stitch and one double crochet in the next three. One, two, and three. Now we're building the white of the eye. Two double crochets in the next, and one double crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, and three. And again, we'll repeat this working all the way around, and join back to that chain three. Oops, there we go. Have to be careful when working with two strands of yarn not to drop one of them. All right, so we'll join back to our chain three. Two double crochets in the next, one in each of the next, and repeat. I've completed row five. One double crochet in the next three, two in the next, one double crochet in the next three, and repeat. Join back to our chain three and chain three. Now we just have one more row on the eyeball. 
All right, and so what we're gonna do is again, stitch a double crochet in the same stitch as our chain three, and this time we're going to stitch one double crochet in the next four. One, two, three, and four. Two double crochets in the next stitch, and one double crochet in the next four. One, two, three, four. Alrighty, so we'll stitch those two double crochets in the next stitch, one double crochet in the next four, Whoops, got some green coming out with my white. There we go. One, two, three, four. Two double crochets in the next, one in each of the next four, and repeat all the way around for our last row and join back to our chain three. I completed that last row and on your last row, row six, you're going to have 60 double crochets. All right, let's go ahead and cut our yarn. We'll take this last one here and we'll go into this next stitch and pull that loop to the back so we have a nice finish. All right, well, I'm gonna need to weave this in and some of my other ones. I'm just gonna tuck it for now. And so now I have two eyeballs I can use to make my pillow, a front and a back. So what you're going to do is you're gonna put them together after you've weaved in all your ends and you're gonna put them together and we're gonna stitch around here with the red yarn. So we're gonna bring in our red and we are again using two strands All right, now we're going to stitch a single crochet all the way around, except we're gonna leave a little bit of an opening, about four or five inches, so we can stuff it, all right? So, we'll go in the stitch on this side and the stitch on this side and stitch a single crochet. And we'll do this working all the way around our eyeball pillow. one single crochet in each single crochet around, stitching the front to the back and leaving about a five inch opening for stuffing. So I've stitched around, stitching the front to the back. I've left an opening here to stuff, so I've got my stuffing here. And again, the amount of stuffing you stick inside is kind of up to you. For these, I don't stuff them real tightly. I just want them to have a nice shape. So just a couple of handfuls. Oh, got a string stuck in there. Get that out of there. <laughs> I was in my stuffing for some reason. And then I just sort of work it around the edge like that. Make sure you got some all the way up to the edge here. And now we'll just finish it up and stitch it closed. We're almost done. We need to make the little glimmer in the eye <laughs> with the white stitch in the black pupil. And then we'll add those red bloodshot eyes, those lines that make our eyes look bloodshot. Okay, let's get that string there. We'll stitch that last one. Oop, there we go. We've stitched around. We're going to skip that chain one that we first added and go right in that first single crochet with a slip stitch. We'll cut that yarn, 
We'll go to the next stitch and grab those loops. There we go. Pull it to the back. There we go. Now we just need to take a few minutes and weave these in and then it'll be ready to add the details to our creepy eyeball. The first thing we're going to do is make a couple of lines right here. Um, like in this blue one where we made those stitches. It just gives a little glimmer to the eye. I think it gives it orneriness. <laughs> now we're going to go into the center and come out around the edge of that first stitch. We're going to leave this out for now and I'll, I'll explain that why in just a second. We're going to go in and come out where we came in. So we just made a loop and I'm holding this so I don't pull that out when I pull that a little bit snug. All right, I'm going to turn this because I'm going to come in here. You want to make sure that line is straight. So you're going to go right in there. And now we're going to swirl this around inside that stuffing and come out the back. All right, and then I take this and make sure it's not pulled too tight, but we also want it to lay nice. There we go. And then we'll make a little knot. I'll make sure we got both those strands. I pull it just a little bit because we're going to pop that back down inside that stuffing. Flip that and I just take the crochet hook and sort of jab at it to get it back inside that stuffing. All right, so now we're going to do a similar thing here, but I want to take my needle and sort of lift that up a little bit. All right, and then we'll do the same thing with these two. We'll just go right in that hole. We'll swirl it in some of that stuffing. That way it can get caught and we'll come up a different spot. This one I'm going to do not this way. Again, we'll just take that hook and sort of jab it back inside that stuffing. That one needs to go in deeper. There we go. All right, so <clears throat> now we've got the little, well, I call that a glimmer in the eye. And I'll just sort of pull this string just a little. Not You don't want it loose, but you want it to lay nice. All right, so there's the twinkle in the eye. Now this portion is a little bit random. You can see on this one I've got them going different directions. And I've sort of spaced them out randomly. All right, and that's kind of what you do. But the key to making these stand out is to stitch in a stitch and not in between. All right, so I'm going to come up from behind and I'm going to come right up in a stitch. We're going to leave a little bit here so we can knot that up. And you'll probably have to rethread your needle several times, all right? So one of them I like to make is just to go up, make a straight stitch, and you're going to go right in a stitch and kind of go over to the side. And you kind of you've got to kind of gently pull just to make sure it's how you want it to be. Then I'll go back in and come up stitch on this side. Like I said, the key is to go in the stitches and not the holes. And you just kind of gently work with it a little bit so it lays pretty. And then we'll come back over here. Then I want to make another stitch. So I'm going to come over here a little farther down. And I try to go through some of the batting so that the red doesn't show through here. So you go down in and kind of up in that stuffing or batting, whatever you want to call that. Okay, so now I'm just going to make a weird angle. Go back this way. And that's what I do. I just make I just made random stitches, nothing normal. <laughs> so I'm going to go down in that batting or stuffing and then come back in a stitch. And you don't want to pull this too tightly where it pulls and puckers. You want it to kind of lay pretty. If a creepy eyeball can be pretty. <laughs> All right. So this time I'm going to make a V stitch like I did the other one. So I'll go down and come up over here. There we go. And I'll go back there and then come right up in there. And swirl around and go farther down. There we go. 
I'm kind of caught in some batting there. There we go. Yeah, this part will probably take you longer than the whole pillow itself. But these little red bloodshot marks are just so worth it to make this eye. Because I think it's kind of cute and creepy at the same time. All right. And so they don't all have to be the same. They need, they actually look better if they're just a little bit random. And if you don't like where you did them, you can always come in and add more in between. But see, I'm just making some red marks that looks like the eyes are all bloodshot. And I'll continue that around. <clears throat> I usually, uh, I'm using two strands of thread. I usually get about 16 to 18 inches, and I do that probably three times. So I've done all the bloodshot eye portions that I wanted, and as we worked, we pulled them to the back on the ends. And again, what I do on the end is I just sort of pull it up. I make a little knot, and then we clip that off. And then we take our hook and sort of push that into the stuffing. And sometimes um, it's a little bit more difficult than others. And I'll use my needle to sort of poke that in down into the stuffing. Okay. All right. Now, I only put the bloodshot portion and the twinkle in the eye or the sparkle in the eye on the front. But you can do both sides if you want to. So here's my green creepy eye and my blue creepy eye. And now my goofy eyeballs are two different colors and ready to decorate for Halloween. <laughs> I just love them. They're just so much fun. I think you're really going to enjoy making these. They stitch up fast and they make great Halloween decorations. Mm -hmm.